I'm going to show you a design system roadmap that you can use to improve your web design skills. And if you want to have a look at these roadmaps yourself, you can visit the website roadmap.sh. I've done a roadmap before for front end development, and I learned a lot. That's why this time I thought I'd do a design one. All right, so let's start here at the beginning, understanding the basics. That's the very first thing you need to know. And to know this, you need to know what a design system is, what a component library is, and what's the difference. Let me explore these. So a design system is kind of like a single source of truth. It's everything that you need to know if you're trying to build or work with a brand or a company. And it's a bit different from a component library because a component library is just one aspect of a design system. A design system can include your color scheme, your topography, your grids, your logos and icons and how to use them and all the documentation that goes alongside of that. So it's really the big picture while components and their libraries are just one component of that big picture. Moving further down this roadmap, one thing that's important is knowing how to make a design system. Now, there's a few good resources on that. I do know that Free Code Camp put together a really nice video here on how to make one from scratch, and it's probably worth checking out, although it is about four to eight hours long. So you'll definitely have to be invested if you wanna have a look at that, but it is there for your reference. Then heading further down, we get to existing design analysis. This has a few things such as visual auditing and existing design processes, as well as A-B testing and documentation. And this kind of leads to things like icons and colors, topography, as well as creating components like avatars and cards. But let's quickly read through what it is. So an existing design analysis is the first step in creating a design system from an existing design. And it is performing a design analysis and understanding what you'll be working with to identify the requirements and prepare a plan. So performing a design analysis consists of understanding the existing design process, performing a visual audit, identifying design elements, identifying common components, understanding the A-B testing and experimental needs, and understanding any locale or regional requirements, and finally documenting your findings. So all of this is quite complex, but if you're working with a design, it's important to be able to actually understand the design you're working with. Otherwise, the whole point of a design system is kind of thrown out the window if you're not even using it. That's why existing design analysis is such an important step along this roadmap. I'm not going to get into what icons or color or topography is, because if you don't know that, then I'm definitely worried. But if you do want to learn a bit more about common avatars, buttons in, I suppose, UI kits, there is kind of like a library here, design system examples that you can go to. And it's got common ones like the material design from Google, carbon design from IBM. Let's have a look at these. So this is material design. Uh, Google's put a lot of work into this website. Carbon design is this one here. We've got another one here from um, Atlassian. And this one is also quite a nice design system. And this one here from Shopify, which I believe has a version 12 now. Um, but all of these have common design patterns on how to create, for example, card layouts, how to lay out your application, how to, for example, have the settings here with sub categories on the left and the actual inputs on the right. So these are kind of like the golden standard of how to create a design system and why they're used as for examples. Heading back to the design roadmap, let's take a look at creating a design language. It's the next largest item that links to a lot of things on, for example, how to use logos, how to create guidelines for color and topography and iconography. So creating a design language is basically how to communicate with your audience how a product is designed so that it's consistent for all users across their experience of an application or a website. And this is probably something you commonly see. Like for example, you always know you're using an iPhone based on the design language that they've created. Though I think any designer or developer or no code expert will understand a logo design language because often we're given examples of small logos, large logos, monochrome logos, 
logos and their design usage, such as obviously you can only have a monochrome version on a black or dark background. If for example, you're on mobile, you want the logo at the top in the middle with the text below. But if you're on a desktop, you want the logo on the left and the text on the right hand side. These are kind of like the principles or guidelines that you should be using when you're creating a design language for a website and how it should use its logo. To continue through the roadmap, we also have things like a layout and color. And this includes things like spacing, breakpoints, grids, units. And if you don't know what this is in terms of proper guidelines around using layouts and spacing, this is where you often have rules around whether you should use multiples of two, four, five. So for example, you might have spacing between buttons of four pixels and eight pixels from X and Y. You might then also have white space using multiples of four as well. So 20 24 pixels or 48 pixels, whereas other websites like multiples of five. So the button might be spaced five pixels by five pixels. White space might be, for example, 30 pixels and 60 pixels. So you're getting those multiples of five. Or for example, with color, you want to have less contrast for different types of websites and others might want to have a lot of expression. Like for example, a website like Apple might have lots of grays and blues, whereas a website like Nintendo might have lots of reds and Pokemon lots of rainbow colors. Next, let's take a look at what defining design tokens is, because if you haven't heard of it, it's essentially creating values or variables for your design system for things that like color and topography, but for spacing and other things too. And this basically allows you to have consistent looks and feels throughout your website where you're just pulling the attribute or the value in, and it's always giving you the main thing that you're looking for. So as an example for color, your primary color might be a value, and that value might might be blue and your tertiary color might be teal for example and the same for topography rather than going oh i need h1 h2 h3 they're also predefined in your design system and that just makes it easier to use them as reference and ideally whenever you update your design system all the references get updated as well the next part of this design system roadmap is creating your core components now i'm not going to go through how to actually create them but understanding what they are is pretty important they're the main ones that you use on a website things like your cards and your buttons, your forms and your inputs. They're the ones that you want to have a pre-made sets of so that any person doing design or any person even doing development can immediately pull them and use them within the website. And React and Next.js makes these very easy because you can create component libraries. Even Figma makes these very easy because you're able to create components too. And no code platforms like Wix Studio also makes this easy because now you can pretty much create anything as a component and reuse it anywhere on a website. So this is something that I'll maybe showcase a little bit later in this video, how to create component libraries and how to reuse them. But for the time being, let's move over to tooling. And I suppose that this is actually quite an easy section because for tooling, we have design tools and development tools and design tools are like your design editor. So most cases, I assume people are using things like Sketch, Figma or Adobe XD. I'm not sure if Adobe still actually runs Adobe. XD seeing they tried to acquire Figma, but then that acquisition failed. So maybe they're back to making Adobe XD. Not too sure, but let me know in the comments. Then there's a version control. So yes, design systems can have version control, just like code. And there are contribution guidelines, just like Git. There is a whole lot more we can get into in terms of developing a system design and things like documentation, code style, unit tests, accessibility testing, semantic versioning, release strategies, but I'm not going to cover all of that. Instead, what I thought would be useful is to create a really small design system so you can actually see what it looks like. Now, if you wanna learn more about design, I've actually put together an entire design course called Enhance UI or Teach Me Design. It's the design fundamentals for people like developers who coming in and have never learned it before. It covers things like how to do topography, color theory, how to create components that actually look good and what makes them look good. Let me show you an actual design system on a website I've been working on on Wix Studio. This website is called Merge or mergewebdev.com if you want to visit or join my community. I've got a pretty cool Discord in that community where we talk about design, you can get free design reviews and much more. Now on here, there is an option here for global sections and here we can create some components, but I want to head over to Site Styles and Site Styles has a bit of a design system made for both the colors and the topography. So here I've got all my topography 
typography for headings, which has this really cool CY font, which I think looks like a bit of a coder and designer put together. And I've got examples of how to use that here. So you can see that font in use. Then the other thing I have here are the colors themselves. And I'm using these blacks and greens and oranges. And I think they look kind of like almost gamery because I'm trying to gamify a couple of the things I'm doing here. And you'll be able to see how the use of this design system means that the website itself, as you scroll through, has this consistent look and feel that is both professional, but adhering to that design system with its icons that are kind of pixelated, with its font and topography, and with its overall aesthetic. And this is the purpose of a design system. If you want me to do a bigger video on design systems and how to make one from scratch, let me know in the comments. And if you want me to do other roadmaps like a UX roadmap or a UI roadmap, then let me know in the comments below as well.